to the house of God uh -huh. now for your own soul's sake. See, that's why the Bible is redundant. The Lord says things over and over because we're stiff-necked, hard-headed people. Jesus. Calm down and listen to one another. And more importantly, listen to this fight. Right? Says keep the commandments. The sister back there asked a great question. She asked, "How do we get the curses off of us?" Right? Give me Deuteronomy chapter thirty. Deuteronomy chapter thirty. But I want to go more into detail about that. Okay, about how we get these curses off of us. What's the process and what's going to happen when the curses come off of us? Read that. Start at verse one. Deuteronomy chapter thirty and verse one. And it shall come to pass. It's going to happen in the future when all these things are come upon thee. The blessing and the curse. At one time we had the blessing. At one time, a lot of people don't know it, but black people ruled the entire world. Okay, during the time of King David and King Solomon. Like, like when you read the book of Song of Solomon 1 and 5, he tells you that he's black and he's beautiful. Solomon was a black man. Christ was a black man. All of the prophets were black. They looked like us. Go ahead. Which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God had driven thee. So because of our disobedience in keeping the commandments, remember it said we were going to slavery on slave ships? So he said, in all those lands that I drove you out to, when y'all remember who y'all are, in 1 Kings it says, bethink yourself. Remember, when you remember that you're the Israelites and you need to come back to keeping God's commandments, go ahead. Verse 2, and shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this. So once we remember that and we come back to keeping the commandments and we start to obey God again as the Israelites. Thou and thy children. Thy what? Thy children. Meaning we have to teach, not only do we have to know, but we have to teach our children the commandments, right? And so on and so forth. She's going to have to teach her kids. Meaning we're coming back to our her heritage. We're not coming back to religion. If you, give me that sign right there. Hold that man-made religion sign up right there. Get that. A lot of people don't know it, but every religion that we follow in America was created by men. Okay? This Bible was given by the inspiration of God. And it's not religion. This is a heritage. It's a heritage of one people. It's the heritage of the Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The people you find on this sign. And there is a remnant that's scattered throughout the earth. Okay? Read on. And shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice. According to all that I command thee this day, uh -huh. thou and thy children, Breathe. with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Meaning we got to fully go after the Lord. We got to give up our ways and we got to go, you know what? I'm following, I'm following this Bible. I'm going to do what it say. I realize that I'm an Israelite. Okay, for the woman it says don't wear pants, right? So I'm going to start wearing dresses. When you see how our sisters dress, it's beautiful. The Bible uses the word adorn yourself. The word adorn means to make more beautiful. Right. So when you have your wife, your daughter, and they wear modest dresses, they actually are more beautiful. Okay, when they come back to their hair, they're wearing their natural hair. You know what I'm saying? For the man, we're not supposed to shave our head bald or shave our beards off. But you can trim it like you did, like what you're doing right now, that's perfect. Okay, but when you take, when the white man, you know, clean shaven look, when you take it and you shave it all up, we're not supposed to do that. It said your your beard is a manly badge of dignity. That shows the difference between you and your wife. You know what I'm saying? A clean, that clean face, the only people that have clean faces is women and babies. Okay? That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. After we come back to keeping the commandments and we teach our children and they keeping the commandments, what's going to happen? 
will turn thy captivity. He's going to turn the slavery. We still in slavery this day. Okay, and I'm going to get that for you. But he says, then he's going to turn the captivity and have compassion upon thee uh -huh. and will return and gather thee from all the nations. Whether the Lord thy God had scattered thee. So he's going to return and he's going to gather us from all the places that we were scattered through slavery. You ever heard the term the diaspora or the diaspora as some people say? Those are the people that was taken in slavery and scattered all over the earth. That's us. That was the Israelites. Go ahead. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of the heaven. Meaning don't matter where you are. They, our people are in every nation under heaven. Go ahead. From thence. Will the Lord thy God gather thee? Uh -huh. And from thence will he fetch thee. Okay, he and bring the, us back. Go ahead. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. Meaning we're going back home. Y'all you, know what our homeland is? Our real homeland? Israel. That's our homeland. When you read Galatians 4 and 26, it tells you Israel, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. That's the real motherland. And it's in Africa. It's at the northern eastern tip of Africa. Okay, they'll tell you it's the Middle East, but the Middle East was a term created in the 1850s. During this time, there was nothing called the Middle East. That's a new term in the earth. It was called, you had the Near East and you had the Far East. Okay, go ahead. And they do that, they tell you Middle East because they want you, you, when they say Middle East, what's the first thing you think? Arab. So that's why they say, Jesus looked Middle Eastern. They want you to think you look Arab and not like the Bible describes. Right. As a black man with woolly hair. Go ahead. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. Uh -huh. And thou shalt possess it. Mm -hmm. And he will do thee good right. and multiply thee above thy fathers. He's going to multiply us. And what else? And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. Meaning he's going to give us that. He says he's going to take away the, the stony heart. That hard heart that we got right now where our people rebellious don't want to do the commandments. So he's going to take away that stony heart and he's going to give us a fleshly heart. One that where we desire to keep the commandments. We understand it's our heritage right. and we come back to being who we truly are. When we see our people, when you see, you ever seen The Walking Dead? That's our, that, that's a mockery of our people. Then, brother, you got someone that's understanding. He dealing with you, bro. Yeah, downtown. All praises. Go ahead. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart uh -huh. and the heart of thy seed right. to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart uh -huh. and with all thy soul uh -huh. that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon Hold on. You got to hear this part. So after we come now, this is the part I want. I read all that just to get to this. Okay, because after we do all that, then he's going to do this. Listen, what's going to happen to the curses. Then he's going to do what? And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemy. He's going to do what? Put all these curses upon thine enemies. What that sound like? You ever heard a word called karma? Yeah. Or oh, we'll go around, come around? Yeah. He said he's going to take the curse of all that stuff that we went through. He said he's going to take it off of us. And he's going to put it on them. Yeah, go ahead and finish right. that scripture. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee. You, he don't want that to happen. He did it like this. You don't want that to happen, brothers? Okay. I'm on the same I'm like, look. Hey, the gospel is the good. That's the good news right there. That's the good news. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 19 and then y'all get out of here. Okay. Verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. So y'all here listening, heaven and earth is recording this day against you, meaning that after this, there's not, you're not gonna be able to say, Lord, I didn't know because you know. And it's a blessing that he brought you here to wake you up to this knowledge. Go ahead. That I have set before you life and death. Today, life and death was set before you. Keeping the commandments is life, according to Proverbs 7 and 2. The wages of sin is death, according to Romans 6.23. So he's saying, you have a choice to make now. Go ahead. I have said before you, life and death, uh -huh. blessing and cursing. Right. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So he's saying, choose life. Choose to keep the commandments. Choose to come back to your heritage. What's your question, sis? Yeah. Revelation. What is that? 
somebody that you're close to that, or that you love, or maybe a husband or wife. I'm gonna show you what it's talking about. I'm gonna show you what it's talking about. When I was talking about the karma thing, but I, and we don't we don't believe in necessarily as karma, but what goes around comes around in the scriptures because we serve a just God. Meaning the same thing that the other nations did to us, he's gonna they're gonna get the same thing. That's why I was talking about where it's gonna turn to captivity and he's gonna take the, the curses off of us and he's gonna put them on our enemies. Watch this. This is the book of Revelation. Chapter 13 and verse 9. Uh -huh. If any man have an ear, we all have ears, right? What it's saying is if anybody, if you have understanding, go ahead. Let him hear. Then understand this. He that leadeth into captivity. Who's the man that led the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? Who put your forefathers in slavery? Who did it? Huh? Now think about think, think about what I'm asking. Who brought us over here on slave ships? The other people. Who brought us, bro? The English. The English? Okay, what's another name for them? Devil. Okay, what's another name for them? Europeans. White people. Okay, and this is what we got to understand. I, I said the other it people. wasn't just white people. Okay? Everybody at one time had the children of Israel in slavery. Okay? But it says, he that leadeth into captivity, he that leadeth into captivity uh -huh. shall go into captivity. The same people that led us into slavery, they go into the slavery. Go ahead. He that killeth with the sword uh -huh. must be killed with the sword. So when they killed all of those, y'all ever heard about the Middle Passage and all of those, all of those black people they had killed coming across on the slave ships and all of that? It said the people who did that to us, the same thing gonna be done to them. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Now, we're not going out and killing nobody with the sword. This is, it says Christ is going to avenge us. Okay? He's coming back. Why is Christ coming back? It's, like we always say we saved, right? But what are we saved from? Give me that Luke 1. Luke 1, 68. What are we, what are we going to be saved from? A lot of people think, are we going to be saved from the devil? Are we going to be saved from? What are we going to be saved from? We're going to be saved from the curses. Let's see what the Bible says. Read Luke chapter 1 and verse 68. Uh -huh. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. See, it's not saying the Lord God of everybody, the Lord God of the whole world, which is what they want you to believe John 3 16 mean, but it don't. The world is talking about is Israel. But it says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Go ahead. For he had visited and redeemed his people. He redeeming his people, not everybody. Go ahead. And had, and had raised up an horn of salvation. For us in the house of his servant David. He says he raised up, raised up a horn of salvation. That's Christ. It says in the house of his servant David. Meaning Christ came through the lineage of King David. Okay, go ahead. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Which have been since the world began. So since the beginning of time. The prophets always prophesied of a Messiah that would come and die for the nation of Israel. Go ahead. That we should be saved. That we should be saved. We, us. The Israelites, go ahead. That we should be saved from our enemies. What are we gonna be saved from? Go ahead. And from the hand of all that hate us. We're gonna be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Give me that, give me the give me the judge, give me um Exodus. Was it Exodus 21 and 16? It says we're gonna be saved from the hand of all that hate us. Meaning the people that brought us over here and still hold us captive to this day. Let me ask you this. If you want to leave the country, what do you need? You need a pat, you need a letter from the white man that says you can leave the country. So are you free? If I'm free, I can go and do whatever I want to do, right? I can't. I got to get a pass. Just like when you wanted to leave the plantation, you had to get a pass from your slave master to go to another plantation. Right. So you can't leave America, the plantation of America, unless you get a pass. We got to know who you are. We got to know where you're going. We got to know how long you staying. Here, take this picture. Do this. Do that. You st we still under that. Matter of fact, hold that. Give me Baruch 3 and 8 real quick. Hold that and I'm going to come right back to that. Because we still in captivity today. They just took the chains off your neck and they said, instead of you working on my physical plantation, I'm going to let you go out and choose your plantation. And you get to go home at night and then go back to your plantation. That's why we call the job the plantation. Go ahead. Right. We, we all do. Go ahead. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 3 and verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. So until this day, we still in captivity. Why? 
where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse because we broke his commandments so he scattered us for a reproach meaning that we're reproached or we're hated by all the other nations and a curse those curses are Deuteronomy 28 go ahead and to be subject to payments to be subject to what payments one of the ways you know you in captivity is that you subject to payments you can't get away from them taxes they let you off the plantation and then they go here's your check but wait a minute before you go spend that money on what you want get him his get him his rent money get him your light bill money get him the insurance money get him the cell phone money give him the water bill money right. give him the you see what i'm saying and by the time you get done by paying for everything you broke again right. you still on the plantation it's the same thing they let you off the plantation and just they when you was on the plantation they had to feed you now they don't have to feed you they give you the little check and they let you feed them but it's the same thing we still this day in our captivity go back where was i at Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Bring out what you, bring up what you had. Somebody keep track of the time. Heck, hold on, what's your question, sis? What's happening over here in Iraq, Iraq. Give me that Matthew 24. That's a good question. Christ, Christ prophesied that, that, that this going to happen. Okay? And it's, it's a lot that goes along with that. It's prophesied. Give me that. What's it like? Verse 4? Start at verse 3. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3. Uh -huh. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, uh -huh. the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? So they're asking him, what's, what, when, they're asking him about the signs of the time and when these things are going to, these things in the future are going to take place. Go ahead. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? So he's saying, how are we going to know when you coming back? Right? Go ahead. And of the end of the world. And when is the end of the world coming? Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. The first thing he said is take heed that no man deceive you. How will we be deceived? A lot of ways. There's going to be a lot of people saying, I'm Christ. Meaning they're not going to literally come up and say they're the physical Christ. But what they're going to do is they're going to come teaching doctrines. Claiming that they're represent representatives of Christ. And they're going to be saying this is him. And this is not him. He looked like that. These are two. If the, He comes with a doctrine. He comes with a doctrine that says go to church on Sunday. His doctrine says the Sabbath day is on the seventh day which is today. Right. He's going to have you celebrating Christmas. Which ain't in the Bible, okay? Well, it's in the Bible, but it actually tells you don't celebrate it. It tells you it's pagan, okay? Okay, but watch. We're going to continue. But what I'm saying is, read on. Watch this. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. That's what we're talking about, okay? And that's all that's going in all your fake pastors. Not teaching the correct, not te teaching the correctness of the scriptures. Not teaching you that you're an Israelite. Not teaching you that you need to repent and keep the commandments. They saying, "Come as you are. All are welcome. Christ coming back for everybody." But that's not what we read in the scriptures. We gotta read the Bible and we gotta believe what the scriptures say, not what these passages is telling us. They tell, they'll tell you in, in with the same mouth. On one side, they tell you we don't have to keep the commandments. We're under grace. But then they'll turn around and say, give me my tithes. Well, tithes is an Old Testament law. So if I got to give you tithes, so I got to keep that law in the Old Testament, but I don't have to do none of the other ones. Right. You see what I'm saying? They're liars. Yeah. Read on. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, uh -huh. and shall deceive many. And many people are going to be deceived by that. By that. That's why they say the wide road. The wide road lead to destruction. We got to get on that straight and narrow path. Okay, go ahead. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. That's the part you want. We're going to hear about these wars and these rumors of wars that's happening. Okay? So we hear about that war. At the same time, we don't. We're actually not hearing about uh, America's bombing somebody else right now. Who they bombing? Uh, who is it? Huh? Somalia. Somalia. Why they ain't talking about how we bombing Somalia right now? But it's like, oh, Ukraine, Ukraine, pray for Ukraine. The people in Ukraine and the people in Russia is the same people. That's right. They literally the same people. Go ahead. And you shall hear of wars 
and rumors of wars. Uh -huh. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. It says, don't trouble yourself with that. All these things have to happen. What he's doing is, give me Joel 3. What he's doing is, he's stirring up the spirits to bring them to fight against each other. What we're witnessing is the beginning of World War III. The very beginnings of it. Okay, so you're gonna see it, it's gonna it's gonna heat up, then it's gonna calm down. It's gonna heat up and it's gonna calm down. But we're in the beginning stages of what's gonna eventually turn into World War Three, nuclear war, and in that war, America's gonna be bombed with nuclear bombs. When you read about that lake of fire in the scripture, it's scriptures is talking about America. This place gonna be this is the place that's gonna burn with fervent heat. Okay, this is Mystery Babylon. Right. This is the mother of harlots. This is spiritual Sodom and Egypt. We in it right now. Right. This is the belly of the beast. That's right. Okay, read what you got. Joel chapter three and verse two. Uh -huh. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. So that's where the fighting is going to take place. Over there around Israel, it says he's going to gather all those different nations. He's going to bring them into the Valley of Jehoshaphat, which means the Valley of Decision, and he's going to make them fight against each other. Go ahead. And will plead with them there for my people. That plea goes into he's going to destroy them. Okay, and that don't mean plead like begging. Okay. When you get when you read was Isaiah sixty six, it told you that pleads me he's going to he's going to destroy them with fire. Right. Go ahead. And for my heritage, Israel, he's going to do all that for us. He's going so so. Give me a uh, give me Second Peter real quick, three and ten. Watch this, Second Peter. Give me that, because what we should be doing right now is we should be learning what we have to do to get ourselves together to get right for that second coming. Okay. Second Peter 3, 10, 3 and 10. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. Uh -huh. But the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is when Christ makes his second coming. It's when he comes back. He's going to come back in the midst of World War III. Go ahead. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. But we don't know when that's going to be. It says it's going to come like a thief in the night. Meaning that we don't know what time he's going to show up. A thief in the night don't call you ahead of time and say, hey, I'm on my way to steal your stuff. He's going to pop up on you. Okay, and he's going to pop up a lot on a lot of people in the midst of their sin. Okay, go ahead. In which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. It says the heavens are going to pass away with a great noise. What's that great noise, brother? What's that great noise? That's a nuclear bomb. That's an ICBM missile. Okay, that's what the great noise is. Go ahead. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. It says the elements... The trees, the water, the air, it says it's going to melt with fervent heat. The, that, those ICBMs, that nuclear fire, it burns so hot that it consumes everything it touches. Okay, regular fire don't burn that hot. We can drop regular fire on the ground and it'll just burn till it burn out. Right. Not nuclear fire. Nuclear fire burning up everything. Go ahead. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. So all these works, all these buildings, all of these cars we covered after, all of these clothes and the jewelry and all the stuff we think we need, it said all of it's gonna be burned up. It's all gonna be burned up. You said what? Purged? It's, oh, you said it's gonna perish. It's gonna be perished, it's, it's gonna perish, it's gonna be purged. The earth is going to be purged. Go ahead. Keep going, yeah. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved so it's saying seeing that all these things shall be dissolved all the stuff we think we need gonna be burned up go ahead what manner of persons ought you to be what should you how should you be acting what type of person should you be if you know if you now have this knowledge what should you be doing with yourself should be try and how do we get right man it's that simple it's that simple we should be Understanding we're the Israelites, we are the people that are written about in this book, all of the stuff pertains to us, and we need to come back to it, learn the commandments, and start to keep them. We gotta come back to our heritage. Everything that we learned over here in America, we learned from the people that taught, we learned from slavery. When we learned those religions, the Christian, the Baptist, they gave us that in slavery. That ain't in the Bible. They don't tell you, where's in the Bible tell you be a Baptist? We'll tell you be a Catholic. We'll tell you be a Seventh-day Adventist. Only thing he says from the beginning to the end is what? Give me, give me that Revelation 22 and 14. Give me that. And we're going uh, to wrap it up in a second. 
It's your heritage. It's your heritage. That's what it is. Watch this. Give me a hold that. Give me Sirach 17 in uh, verse 11. Give me that. I'm gonna show you what he what he gave us. Sirach 17 and verse 11. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. It's the it's the part be, it's the part of the Bible between uh, Malachi and Matthew. It's the part that they took out. Okay, but it's in the original King James Bible. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 17 and verse 11. Besides this, he gave them knowledge. So he gave us knowledge. He gave, as it says, them. He gave the Israelites knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. He gave us the law of life for an heritage. Jump over to uh, Sirach 19, 19. <laughs> he gave us the law of life for our heritage. So in, within your heritage is contained how you eat, how you dress, how you deal with your brothers and sisters, the high holy days that you keep. Not the holidays, the high holy days. That's what they're actually called. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus chapter 19 and verse 19. Uh -huh. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. That's the doctrine of life. That's our doctrine. Our doctrine is the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord. Not Baptist, not Episcopalian, right. not Lutheran, you see what I'm saying? But the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord, that's our doctrine. That's the doctrine given to us, read on. And they that do things that please him, and they that do the things that please him, which are keeping those commandments, shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. You will receive the fruit of the tree of immortality, meaning everlasting life. You see what I'm saying? Right? Now go back where I had you. And then we're going to get uh, Matthew 26. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. Uh -huh. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are they that know the commandments. That they may have right. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Uh -huh. That they may have right to the tree of life. Uh -huh. And may enter in through the gates into the city. So you have to do the commandments in order to enter into the gates, into the city. That city is talking about what? Give me the city. Give me the revelation. Uh, I'm, 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 it's talking about the kingdom, right? Go ahead. Give me that. Revelation 21. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 12. Now is everybody going? Is everybody welcome in the kingdom? You say yes. Watch this. Okay, see? That's why I had to check. I had to check now. Watch this. Revelation. Chapter 22 and verse 12. We gonna see who the kingdom is for. And how they wall, great and high. Hold on, we gonna let the, this is a curse in our communities. That right there, that's a curse in our communities. Nine times out of 10, that's going to get somebody who had some type of drug overdose. That's the sad part. Go ahead. Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 12. Uh -huh. And how they wall, great, and high. So that kingdom that we want to get into, that we got to keep the commandments to get into, it got a wall that's great and high. And had 12 gates. So it got 12 gates. Now when you see the movies, it say it got one big set of pearly gates, right? Because they always making something up. But the scriptures tell us it got 12 gates into the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. And at the gates, 12 Angel. And there's an angel outside of each gate blocking the way. And only, the only people that can get in there are the people that's supposed to be in there. Go ahead. Her names written thereon. So there are names written on the gates. There are names written on the gates. What names are those? Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Good so boy. if your name is not on the gate, you're not getting in. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 
144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.